Hi, this is Stacy Roshan. One of my biggest interests in educational technology has come from a deeply personal space. As an introverted student and someone who needed time to think, hand raising was never the ideal form of participation for me. Classroom lecture always went too quickly, and it wasn't until I went home in the evening and really processed through my notes at my own speed that I was able to start connecting all the material and understanding it. So when I became a teacher, particularly at an independent school, I knew that the smaller classroom sizes would give me the opportunity to sit with my students on a daily basis and really get to know them as individuals, which was probably the most exciting aspect of things for me. But what I learned was even with the smaller class sizes, curriculums can get really packed and time is still very much an issue. And so that took me into my journey with tech integration. I started flipping my classroom, embedding learning checks into homework for on-the-spot analytics, and then looking to tools like Pear Deck and Flipgrid to allow every student in the classroom to share their ideas and thoughts in a format that best fit them. Now, I've talked about these things for a number of years. But it was during emergency remote and hybrid learning that these ideas started resonating with teachers on a whole new level. One of the simplest examples of this was just the chat in a Zoom or a Google Meet. When we went remote in the spring of 2020, teachers started telling me that they were hearing from students they had known all year in different ways because they had opened up this new way for students to contribute via the chat. And that same thing happened, but in reverse, the following school year when we transitioned back to face-to-face -face learning. As happy as teachers were to be back in the classroom, and they were really happy about that, many of them wanted to preserve that chat like feel that was available in the video communication. And that was such a powerful moment for me in my role. Instead of me sharing why tools like Pear Deck are so important to incorporate into our classrooms, teachers were now seeing an actual problem and looking for a solution that Pear Deck could so easily provide. So let me take you through just a couple of examples of transformation that I've seen in the past year or two that I think will really stick. So let's start with Pear Deck, since we've talked about that already. If you haven't used Pear Deck before, it's a tool that allows students to interact with any Google Slides presentation. Instead of simply showing a Google Slides with instructional material, teachers can add questions on each slide in the form of a text response, draggable dot, multiple choice, and freeform drawing, and then launch the presentation in Pear Deck. Students log into that session from their own device, and instead of just passively viewing, they're actively engaging with each and every question that's asked. In using Pear Deck, teachers can provide adequate wait time when posing a question and ask every student to formulate a response, share their thoughts, and make sure that that's representative of what the full class is saying when projected on the board. The responses that teachers project are anonymous in nature so that no individual student feels called out. This can be helpful as teachers work to build a classroom environment that feels safe and inclusive of all voices and ideas. Pear Deck isn't only a tool when presenting lessons. I personally use it most frequently as a warm up activity. I start with a temperature check and then ask a couple of questions to prime us for the activity ahead. When I project the responses on the board, we can celebrate multiple ways students are thinking through a math problem. We can talk about the incorrect answers without calling any individual student out as we analyze mistakes and problem solve collectively. This is a hugely valuable piece of the learning process. Now, let's look at another tool like Flipgrid. Flipgrid usage was already taking off 
prior to the pandemic. But teachers took creative uses to the next level when the need arose. If you haven't used Flipgrid before, think of it as a threaded video discussion platform. Not only could Flipgrid be used for private check-ins with students asynchronously, it could also be used for students to easily record a presentation and still capture the important aspect of peer-to-peer learning and sharing that happens during classroom presentations. In fact, teachers reported that students were more engaged with their classmates' presentations using Flipgrid, and this is something that is stuck even as we've moved back to the classroom. Why? One, when creating presentations, students can tap into their creativity and create a powerful video that is engaging and informative. There's a lot we tend to learn about our students when we give them these creative models of expression. Two, Flipgrid allows students to easily share their video on a common Flipgrid topic, which is viewable to the entire class without uploading or downloading of video files. Three, Flipgrid's commenting feature allows for threaded discussions to happen seamlessly. Because students can pick and choose which videos to interact with in Flipgrid and can watch these videos at their own pace, they can choose to interact with topics that interest them most, oftentimes giving more focused attention to those presentations than we could have seen with live presentations alone. Another use of Flipgrid that I saw soar during remote and hybrid learning is Flipgrid as an alternative form of assessment or as a piece of a pencil and paper assessment. In these tasks, students are asked to explain their thinking and reasoning, and teachers can really gain pretty awesome insight into how students are processing material, how deeply they're understanding the material, and where they may be getting stuck. Personally, I've used Flipgrid in this way for years, and I can't tell you how much it has helped me connect with students and has allowed me to guide them in ways I wouldn't have been able to otherwise. But here again, it's when teachers experience this themselves that transformation happens. The pandemic forced teachers to try new methods, and this is one that is clearly stuck. The only new tool that we actually onboarded as a school during remote learning was Kami. Kami adds rich multimedia tools to any PDF. This, again, was a tool that I had personally relied on in my online teaching, but I hadn't seen the need to push it out school-wide prior to the pandemic. I'm so thankful that we onboarded this as a tool in such a meaningful way, because this, too, is one that we won't be walking back from. Some of the most powerful examples I've seen have been in the world languages classrooms where teachers and students fully take advantage of the built-in audio and video recording features. Students can practice read aloud activities, record voice comments as they practice reading a passage, and so much more. In this way, they can record, listen to their playback, and choose to re-record as they improve their pronunciation and reading skills. Teachers can also leave audio feedback that students can replay as many times as they need. Similarly, teachers can create worksheets and answer keys with audio embedded. As a math teacher, what I appreciate most about Kami was the ability to draw on any PDF with pen tools. Kami has a screen recorder built in so that I could additionally give detailed and actionable feedback to students right on their work. Now, that may seem like it takes a lot of time, but Kami also has a feature allowing teachers to reuse feedback on multiple documents. Plus, students can learn so much from this very specific video feedback, helping them truly own the learning and becoming more resourceful in their studying. So in the long term, this is a huge time saver for me and huge value add. Kami also has rich accessibility features built in. With OCR technology, students use text-to-speech on any PDF. They have the ability to change the language and also the playback speed to fit their needs. They can highlight passages and search through documents as they study, and that is just touching on the surface of what's possible. These are just a few of the examples of transformative learning that I've seen. I truly believe that when we creatively integrate technology into our lesson design, we have the power to create more equitable and empowering classrooms. I hope that the ideas that I've shared with you today showcase just that and have loaded you up with ideas and inspiration that you can carry forward to your students and teachers. Thank you.